those of you that have been subscribed to the channel for a while, you may remember that I uploaded a VTR, VTS spot track car at the start of the year in which I asked, how fun can a budget track car be? And this time we're back with another. But this one's not like the other. This one has trumpets. sticky tyres. So as you can imagine, slow this is not. It's, it's quite quick. The thing is with this car, you can't pretend that it's the quickest thing in the world, because it really isn't. But, considering the fact that I am in essentially what is a bean can, it's quite terrifying, even at quite low speeds. The way this thing picks up to 100 plus is really quite shocking. The uh, the induction when you put your foot down and full throttle and those trumpets open right up is is seriously seriously something else. There's a lot of other stuff done to this car that I really can't even remember off the top of my head. So what we'll do is we'll cut to some B-roll and we'll talk a little bit more about the exact spec. Okay, so that's definitely better. The engine is a 1.6 16 valve J4 engine with an Emerald K6 map, running 174.2 bhp to be precise, with generally throttle bodies and 90mm trumpets. And it is of course the throttle bodies as already mentioned that steal the show. Also, the car has Genvy fuel rails, Genvy inlet manifold, an Omex shift light which flashes in your face begging you to shift up when you're thrashing through the gears, a start button and a couple of other switches on the dashboard, a ported and polished J4 head matched inlets, clear 182 injectors which is a nice little touch, Newman phase 3 cams, uprated valves and springs, 4 branch manifold, a 2 inch Saxport DCAT exhaust which will spit flames if you get the car hot enough, a Peugeot Sport baffled sump which is brilliant if you're going to push the car hard on track and you're running slick tyres, a pug one off aluminium crank pulley, MSD ignition system and a Mokul oil cooler. It also has a Vibrotechnics race engine mounts, a 106.3 rally gearbox with a fully built Quaif LSD and a sat shift shifter. And I'll be completely honest, whilst driving the car I didn't really get the option to push the car hard enough on the road to get the quake to kick in because most of the corners that I drove the car along were too long and windy whereas what you really need is tighter smaller bends but I did get it to kick in a couple of times and it wasn't overly intrusive. In terms of suspension and braking the car is running gas gold coilovers and these were wound up too hard and they were very very firm on bumpy roads. The Brembos were taken from a 486 coupe and the brake lines were all braided. The car had Team Dynamic Pro Race 1.2s which were an amazing wheel for most track cars and to be honest, well let's be honest, they look good on pretty much everything. And then it had GTI, GTR2 semi-slick tyres which I'll be honest I never got enough heat in to really appreciate how grippy they were. Now one of the key differences over the previous car that I reviewed is that this car had a fully seam welded shell and it was done really really nicely underneath inside in the engine bay which had been fully strengthened everything was really really clean and there was no rust there was an OMP lower strut brace strengthened strut tops a fiberglass bonnet as if the car wasn't light enough already along with perspex windows OMP seats a roof scoop and all of the bushes in the car were polybush which further added to that go-kart like feel to be 
said, at lower speeds, the car isn't actually that exciting. It's um, fairly docile, it's very loud, totally impractical for uh, daily use, of course. But the moment you wind this car up is when it really comes alive. There's all sorts going on in here. Very simple dash, very cool switches just at the front. And then you've got this really cool little centerpiece here that shows you the rev counter as it goes up. And as you get nearer to that rev limit, it goes right to red, flashes at you to change. Just like the other Saxon right? This is quite literally as close to a uh, diff, diff cooked in. That diff's really nice actually. Not too aggressive, just about right for what you want. You've got to go fairly slowly because the roads are absolutely awful around here. Noise. Noise is something else, it really is. Gear changes are really good actually, they're really solid. One thing I didn't like that much about the last Saxo is that the gear uh, linkage was a bit ropey, it was a bit hit and miss, especially when trying to select reverse when manoeuvring the car, or any gear for that matter. But with this car it's a lot more solid, the gear changes are very direct. And the fact that the distance between the, uh, the gear stick and the wheel is so close really makes it feel very track focused. The noise is absolutely brilliant quite addictive really. It makes you realise why people love NA engines so much. Turbos are great for going fast, but for having fun, naturally accelerated cars are really where it's at. Ah. Oh, the roads are just not it. You can't really enjoy these cars as much as you want to because the roads just aren't good enough. Do you know what I mean? really quite frustrating. And that brings me on to the downfall of this car. As good as it is, you can't actually exploit this car for what it is good at on a public road. The roads are absolutely shocking. The firm suspension and the car itself just doesn't lend itself very well to a bumpy B road. It is more to the track car spectrum than it is a road car and because of that you really can't exploit it to its full potential. The roads are rubbish, but I can tell you one thing, the car really isn't. Brakes feel really good, tyres feel really good. I not that much need of it. But in the tyre stuff, you can really start to leave on the differential. <laughs> if you want to have fun, this is where it's at, seriously. Underneath the tunnel. <laughs> These are pretty uh, interesting as well. They're rattling in my ear a little bit, not that I really care. That's hardly the most pressing noise issue in this car right now. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this review.